San Antonio Express News, I'm Joy Marie Scott, and this is In Depth, a weekly interview program with Express News journalists who break down their in depth reporting on issues affecting the city and Bear County. Now, electric scooters have been a contentious issue in San Antonio since they popped up last summer, taking over downtown sidewalks. While some urban commuters as well as tourists have enthusiastically jumped aboard them, there are others who see their proliferation as an eyesore, a nuisance. Staff writer Bruce Selkrig covers transportation for the Express News, and he has been following the evolution of attitudes and city policies on dockless vehicles. His latest work addresses what seems to be an overlooked component to the conversation, and that's the danger posed to the blind and wheelchair-bound people who also navigate the sidewalks. So, Bruce, welcome back to In Depth. Now, tell us about a man you met, Lauren Self, who is wheelchair bound and lives off of San Pedro Avenue. I met him in an interesting way. I was just headed home for lunch, <laughs> and uh, I literally just saw him on the sidewalks. I was uh, looking for disabled people to talk about this subject. I saw him. He was navigating these broken sidewalks like we have in San Antonio. He was coming up to an area where I think the sidewalk was missing completely. I pulled my car over, literally just pulled to the edge, curb, parked, put on my flashers, ran over to him, introduced myself, said, would you be willing to talk to me? And he said, sure. So I reparked my car a little bit safer and uh, sat down with him, just just sat with him under a big tree. And uh, we talked for 30 minutes or so. And then uh, we agreed to meet another day uh, with our photographer. And I just heard his whole story. And it was uh, uh, a very interesting tale. It's, uh, he's been in a wheelchair about 10 years after a serious auto accident where he uh, some lower vertebrae were, were all but destroyed. And he, like most people in wheelchairs, has have told me that this is a real um, it's not just an inconvenience it's an inconvenience for most able-bodied people for him and for others it's a true obstacle where you wake up one day you're you're on your normal route to the bus stop or the store or wherever and now you encounter something that prevents you from getting down the sidewalk. You don't just go around it all the time because sometimes there's there's no sidewalk there and there aren't people there to help you and you don't necessarily want to ask for help either. And so it's just a, a, a real affront to their sense of freedom. And so what does he do when he, um, if he kind of comes across like a litter of them on the sidewalk, what does he, how has he been uh, dealing with them? Well, sometimes he, uh, he told me this with sort of a, a smile and a joke. He says, I act like a snowplow and just turn myself around and back them over and knock them over. And, uh, and another woman told me the exact same thing. Uh, a motorized wheelchair is, is pretty powerful. So uh, they just knock him over, and I'm sure that's what he does most of the time. And, uh, you know, the other times you, you just hope you can get around. And, and I'm sure he allows a lot of time in his day for things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you also spoke with Adelie Malone, and she's blind, and she sits on the chair of San Antonio's Disability. Disability Access Advisory Committee, and what struck um, what struck me about about what you know she talked about or you know she told you was that she will be uh, walking down the street down downtown, and they're used to um, confronting um, things that they come across, be it a utility pole, a fire hydrant, but they're familiar with where those might be in the road. Whereas with the with the scooter, that's just random, and they not you know that they're not always expected yeah I, I thought that was really a, a good point that 
let's say you're walking in downtown San Antonio. You know your route pretty well. You're outside a restaurant, and you realize, ah, it's a restaurant that might have one of those foldable placards outside saying seven ninety five lunch special. And you get to know where that is. It's movable every day. It's movable, but it's more or less in the same place. And the utility poles, those are real odd to notice because they're kind of a triangular wire coming to the ground holding up a a pole, but you know where it is. And the scooters are in different locations every single day, even the ones that are neatly stacked are usually in different places. And so you you just learn to to expect the unexpected, which is not what they want, certainly. And if they have an actual dog, which Ms. Malone doesn't, and she's applying to get one, if you have a dog, then that helps you out some. But the dogs are also a little frustrated by the scooters. They they figure it out. They're really smart. They've seen everything. Like in my story, the, the head of Guide Dogs for Texas, she says, these dogs have seen everything from people dressed as donuts, people popping out of the street uh, from manhole covers, uh, you know, all sorts of things. The dogs will figure it out. But when they stop, that makes the blind person pause also. They're now thinking, my dog's unsure. And so I'm unsure for a moment. We're, you know, so that's that's uh, that's very unsettling. And they all uh, they all told me we don't want to be unsettled. It's bad enough. We don't need any uncertainty, and we sure don't want to lose our balance. And oftentimes, people who are on the sidewalk on scooters will come by within inches of them traveling really fast and that really upsets them and they're quiet the scooters um they're electric so they're quiet so they don't always hear them um the way that you know you might hear a honking or you know a loud car or or they're not just they're not prepared for that exactly when you were doing your reporting um i mean a lot of uh, a lot of your story is pointing out to sighted people pointing out to able-bodied people um, something that we're not thinking about you know uh, you don't you just it's it's just something that if you are not if you don't know a person who is blind or you don't know a wheelchair wheel bound a wheelchair bound person you might not think of all of these these things um, because you're just it's not part of your daily your daily life how when you were reporting on this how did you kind of put yourself in, in the situation where you knew what questions to ask or kind of how did you how were you able to kind of think about well this might be an issue or how did you even um, get how did you know the questions to ask that maybe sighted people wouldn't know well I, I didn't I didn't have any special insight uh, but when you've been a reporter a long time you you sort of learn to uh, listen carefully and uh, connect the dots and ask questions without any uh, ego and realize you may say something stupid you may be corrected by someone um, and and you just have to be open to that so uh, all of these people were very helpful to me especially Ms. Malone was very helpful The one of the insights she gave me if I can take some time to detail this she said think about a scooter that's lying on the ground okay so it's an L shaped uh device, metal, fiberglass, carbon fiber. And so you're using a cane, you're going back and forth with your cane, and because it's a V-shaped thing, you can actually have your cane going into the V of a downed scooter, and your white cane hasn't given you any signal yet. You know, it's still telling you you're okay, unobstructed, and then all of a sudden you hit the middle of this V, and you don't know whether you need to step over it, go to the side, 
Now, obviously, if you've handled a couple of them, you're better the third, fourth, fifth time. But then it's Ms. a Malone, hassle. Ms. Malone talks about how she um, fell. She there were I think two instances yeah, where she tripped, she she tripped, tripped. and and I can imagine how unnerving and frustrating that must have been. Yeah, and and she said, this is one thing that I guess sighted people need to be reminded of all the time. She said, if we get turned around, if we fall to our knees, if we get turned around, and she doesn't have a dog, that's really unsettling because we we depend on our direction, our sense of direction to to keep us oriented. She said, being disoriented is really upsetting. So in California, there about you. There's at least a dozen disabled people who have joined a federal class action lawsuit under the Americans with Disabilities Act. You write, and it's targeting these scooter companies. And some of the plaintiffs include amputees and paraplegics. Do you see a lawsuit like that coming to Texas? Well, I touch on that, that the uh, legal landscape is different in Texas, uh, as everyone knows, uh, because of largely Republican judges. The climate is more adversarial to class action lawsuits. Uh, Federal lawsuits, obviously, are in U.S. district courts. Those often have a hard time in Texas because the Fifth Circuit, which is based in New Orleans, is a a, a Republican-leaning court and is not receptive to a lot of these cases. At the state court level, there aren't class actions at that level, but the the individual cases, the personal injury lawsuits, those are, you know, there's those are common. There's a, at least five or six that I know of, and we should expect more of those. But uh, California is a different environment. They they have a uh, a receptive court system in California to these cases. There are at least four class action cases that I'm aware of, three in, found in the L.A. area, one in San Diego, I believe, and uh, they are suing the scooter companies and various cities who they allege are complicit in the whole operation, that the cities have just turned a a blind eye to the problems and they've allowed them to continue because the scooter companies actually fill that void, that transportation transportation niche that hasn't they haven't done very well. So the scooter companies do it and the city kind of looks the other way while you go through all these problems about injured people, inconvenienced people, and just the massive clutter on the streets. Which is kind of what what we see in San Antonio happening Absolutely. right now. Um, so listeners can uh, go to your story on expressnews.com and they can read the full document of the uh, lawsuit that's in California um, happening. How is San Antonio specifically now dealing, how are they kind of dealing with the situation As of July 1st, it is illegal to ride your scooter on the sidewalks. Now, that is looked upon by the disabled community as a good first step, but they're not sure how strictly that will be enforced, and uh, they're still concerned that, that... you know that's that's a good first step, but there are other other things in life they're still concerned about as far as the scooters. Um, the scooter community is probably a bit frustrated by the new regs, and and for good reason. If you're taken off of the sidewalks, which is almost certainly a good deal, that's that's what we want. Sidewalks are for, you know, they're a sanctuary for people walking. If you move scooters off of sidewalks, they only go to streets. 
and our streets don't have enough protected bike paths. So now the issue becomes through this well-intentioned regulation, are we going to see more accidents? Because now those 5,000 permitted scooters in San Antonio, they're going to be on the streets. Not enough of them are protected. So they're going to be making wild left turns and they're going to be doing all the stuff in the middle of traffic and some of it's going to be at nighttime and some of those people will be overserved at your local brewery and uh, there's probably going to be an increase in accidents. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk about the uh, the request for proposals that the city was going to give these companies. Right. Uh, most people have heard this term, the RFP. It's a request for a proposal, and that's how most contracts are done, like the river barges and various things. Cities grant those every single day. Um, what the city has done to narrow, to, to winnow down the groups of uh, uh, the scooter companies, they're going to reduce them from seven down to three and reduce the number of permitted vehicles from 16,000 down to 5,000. And they're going to do that by the request for proposal process, which will set out a lot of guidelines. Here's what we want. And then in some of those areas, they're going to say, impress us with what you can offer, scooter companies. Uh, We want a better system of parking. Uh, What are you going to do about helmets? What do you think about curfews? Uh, What kind of data are you willing to share with the city of San Antonio? So it's a little song and dance audition where you better come in with good stuff or the city's not going to permit you. So that's how they're going to regulate behavior as opposed to the city just saying, you know, here's the speed limit. If you go over the speed limit, we write you a ticket. Mm -hmm. How do you think that the scooter companies are going to respond? Do you have any thoughts on that? I really don't know because I haven't watched one of these happen. Very few people have in this, uh, in the United States. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm going to guess that the companies are going to do a very impressive presentation and they're going to have all this array of stuff we're going to do and how we're going to track our riders. And if they misbehave, we'll know exactly who they are and we'll be able to find them or or bump them from the system completely if they misbehave. And they may follow through and they may not. And if they don't follow through, then that's really where I'm paying attention. I want to see if the city is going to hold them responsible, if there will be any accountability, any accountability. Yeah. Exactly, yes. Joy. Yes. Uh, so clearly there is a lot more to the story as it's going to evolve. Do you have any final thoughts and kind of what else you'll be looking for at uh, in the scooter, in the scooter uh, environment? Yeah, we're going to keep following this because the editors here at the Express News see this story as I see it. It's a metaphor for something much, much bigger. This is a Silicon Valley phenomenon, and their attitude has been, uh, like it or not, their attitude has been, we're going to come here and break a lot of rules. We're going to dump a lot of scooters, and you can catch up with us. If you catch us, we'll say, we're sorry, and write us a fine. But we're going to keep doing this because it's cool. And so we're going to keep following this phenomenon and follow it wherever it goes. We're going to talk about college campuses. We're going to talk about individual cases where people have been injured and it's changing their life forever. Just by one accident, one day on a scooter. Well, thank you to San Antonio Express News reporter Bruce Selkrig for joining me on this week's episode of In Depth. You can uh, follow Bruce's coverage and read more on electric scooters and other transportation issues in San Antonio and Bear County area by subscribing to the ExpressNews.com. For the San Antonio Express News, I'm Joy Marie Scott.